Well, the morning is starting out very good this morning. Um, after the ADP numbers came in much weaker than expected, I also found a new section of trueflation, and I suspect it might be part of the key to the bond yield run-up and the continued hawkishness of the Fed. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Powell has mentioned trueflation as a source, and I had not seen their blog previously, and that's where I got this new information. Tesla is doing very well in this difficult market and doing very well this morning. Um, and uh, potentially some are trying to get, get ahead of the uh, Cybertruck announcement, which seems likely at any moment. I'll talk about my prediction for when at the end of today's program. Listen, uh, Brian Wang will be on later today talking about LK99. You don't want to miss that because it's not over. There is still news breaking on LK99 and news to be broken. Uh, this is Randy Kirk. Hit like, subscribe, and notify if you want to be reminded about Brian later today. And of course, on Wednesday afternoon, we do kind of a midweek analysis. We take a look at what's happened so far in the week and a little bit ahead as to what we're expecting. Um, that's a very popular show. You don't want to miss that. So, uh, oh, and you know what we'll talk about in a little while? You know that cyber truck sales are going strong already. I'm talking about this one. We'll talk about that. Anyway, the shirts have been handed out to employees for the Cybertruck event. The front of Giga Tech Texas is finished, decked out in every possible way and readiness. The trucks are showing up everywhere, doing all kinds of work. Crash tested vehicles are being, you know, videos of those are being shown. What in the world is the holdup? But with the market being racked pretty hard in the last six weeks and Tesla bloodied by the really rough Q3 numbers, which were lower than pretty much everybody expected, the stock is hanging in there. So what is going on? Well, I'm calling the announcement. Oh, I said I'd say that later. <laughs> well, okay, I'll tell you now. I'm calling the announcement for Friday. And if it's not Friday, then we're going into November for the meeting because it's only polite to give three people, people at least three weeks notice for any such event, especially where they have to make travel plans. Meanwhile, I suspect that the narrative on the economy did not have enough legs on it to handle yesterday's labor news. The Fed does look at that uh, uh, job openings number as and they consider that to be an important one. They've mentioned it several times. Um, but now this morning we have ADP reporting just 89,000 new jobs. Uh, August job growth was upwardly revised a little bit, but the 89,000 jobs was a huge under uh, a number, far less than what the street was expecting. And of course, the stock market is responding and, and putting back a lot of what we lost yesterday uh, and in Tesla, putting back more than we lost yesterday. So um, almost all of this job growth from ADP was in services. A few, uh, uh, some of it was coming from construction, which has been showing some kind of strength. Um, I think that's a lot of that could be uh, uh, government. A lot of the strength in construction right now is probably government related. Leisure, 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 leisure. You see leisure. Anyway, le <laughs> leisure and hospitality were getting the lion's share of this increase this morning, which wasn't a very big increase at all. Also contributing more good news were that wages were up. 5.9 year over year. That's way too much for the Fed, but it is the 12th consecutive monthly decline. Now, of course, the Fed is way more interested. I'm way more interested, and the markets will be way more interested in the Labor Department numbers that are due out on Friday, and they are often markedly different from ADP. You might remember last month when uh, the ADP numbers came out, they were much stronger than, than thought, and the market crushed I mean, I think it was down 500 points on the Dow or something. Um, and then uh, on Friday, the ADP numbers came, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the the uh, government numbers came in and they were much more in line and the market recovered. This We could have the opposite this week, but we'll see what happens on Friday. Right now, it is a ray of hope putting back the uh, perfect scenario for a no recession, interest rates coming down, uh, markets picking up, earnings good. All these things were, you know, looking good until yesterday, and now they're back kind of on track. And we'll see what happens on Friday. 
Well, on the other hand, 70,000 Kaiser Permanente health workers hit the bricks today. So one more strike out there. One, I, this, I, is this going to be a record year for strikes going back how many uh, decades? I wonder. Somebody should look that up. In more really good news, last time I checked, oil is uh, dropping almost $2 a barrel again. Um, and this is while OPEC is meeting right now. The Saudis reconfirmed that they will be continuing uh, at only 9 million barrels a day through the rest of this year, but they did not extend that into January, which was a little bit of a surprise. And inventories on gasoline are actually quite strong right now as we, as we go into the off season. Um, and that's keep, keeping some kind of a lid on gas prices, although I did spend $7 a gallon yesterday. Remember, I still have that Volvo that I have to fill up about every three months. <laughs> anyway, yields are down so far, but they're still above 4.7. I'm wondering if any of you picked up any of those 30-year bonds at over 5% yesterday. This is not investment advice, but wow, over 5% on 30 years. That has been a long time since we've seen that. Well, there's a narrative that inflation is fixed. This is my narrative. I'm telling you this is what the narrative of the market is, that inflation is fixed. And that we're not going to continue to have uh, the Fed uh, with the uh, interest rates going up. Um, but I hadn't been able to find the reasoning that the Fed keeps employing to suggest this resurgence of inflation. Or at least that getting the last 1% or 2% is going to be really, really hard. But yesterday, I found that Trueflation has a blog. The blog post for August, which was posted back on September 7th, said that they believe inflation will be back up to 3.5 by year end. This is what you pay me to find, but I should have found it sooner. Anyway, it's interesting that that's what Trueflation believes. So I dug into that. They're seemingly most interested in these areas, and some of these make sense. They're worried about gas prices, and that has an effect on food prices. They're worried about services, including airline tickets, which continue to be quite strong. And uh, similar, uh, they're, they're looking at the wage inflation that's going to come in those categories. They have concerns over wage inflation due to all the strikes. That makes sense. They also are worried about transportation other. This includes auto and truck parts, service labor, and insurance. And we know that insurance is up and likely to continue up for the rest of this year because of what? Because of parts and service labor. <laughs> yeah, so we've got this spinning you know, uh, uh, situation here where one thing is affecting the next. So there you might have the fly or several flies in the ointment of what the Fed is looking at because they do talk about trueflation. They've mentioned it. So they're paying attention and they might have seen this blog even though I didn't. Anyway, I don't know that for sure. The argument by the pundits and the analysts are not anywhere this detailed so that's the only place I can find that are talking like this. It feels as if the hawks are just parroting the feds without knowing why. But maybe that's where the feds get their, their information. So if this is part of the underlying analysis, how does it get shut down? There's only one way with actual data that doesn't confirm that analysis. From the CPI, the PPI, and the PCE, which have all three will be reporting results in October before we get to the next uh, decision by the Fed. I continue to believe that productivity and dramatically lower commodity prices will get us there and that the Fed is not going to be increasing uh, interest rates anymore this year. We will continue to see the bonds come down. As I've mentioned, when I say bonds come down, the bond yields come down. Um, and that's my that's my narrative, right? That's what I think is going to happen. As noted yesterday, another 25 basis point increase in rates will not destroy the economy. And Jamie Dimon agrees with me. He thinks it could go to seven and it wouldn't be a big problem. I did a huge thing on that yesterday. You might want to take a look at that. Prices are being cut. Deflation is possible, says Costco. Okay, now who, who has their hand on the pulse of pricing is certainly, at least in the goods part of inflation, any better than Costco. And they do have travel um, uh, as part of what they do. So they know about travel as well. So anyway, I'll keep my uh, my head down. I'll keep my, uh, my, my green visor on as I check for more and more information uh, that can help us to understand all of this. 
But, you know, Tesla's going to be fine in any of these scenarios, which is maybe why they've been so strong during all of the last couple of weeks. As noted over and over, they have cash, lots of cash, $23 billion at least, no debt, huge pricing power, and multiple new products coming online, not just in the auto area. And I continue to think that the economy is not going to get blown up by the Fed. So, but think about this. Tesla's 50-year forecast by 50, I'm sorry, 50% per year forecast, which Elon Musk said we, he will continue to try to hit, which is 50% per year, starting with 2070. <laughs> Hello, I know it's early for me. <laughs> starting with 2020. So for, tw for 1.8 million this year would be a huge beat. 2023 would have only had to be 1.687. So call it, round it up, 1.7. So 1.8 would be a huge beat. 2024 would require 2.531 or about 700,000 additional vehicles. That Let's call Model 3 additional. I think they can easily get another 100,000. Cybertruck should come in around 150,000, could be more. Model Y, let's call it 225 from Austin, 225 from Berlin, and you've got your 700,000. But if 2025 is gonna happen, you have to have generation three being produced. That would require another 1.2 million cars. That is not going to come from Model Y, Model Three, and and uh, and and Cybertruck. Although Cybertruck could give a couple hundred thousand out of that, and you'll get something from Model Y and maybe Model Three. So then, when you get to 26, you got another 1.8 uh, million additional cars required. You're going to need a lot of Gen 3s to do it. Now, that's not going to be a problem. I see those numbers being easy if Gen 3 is being manufactured in Mexico and in Berlin and in Shanghai. No problem. You should be able to get there easily. Now, the competition to Tesla is here. Please understand this. The competition is here, and it is also going to be coming on strong. It's going to be. It's, it has to be because think of it this way. In order for the total number of BEVs as a percent of the market to e keep increasing exponentially, let's just say at 50% a year, it is going to increase that more than that in 2023 and might increase more than that in 2024. Well, if Tesla is only increasing 50% a year and the overall market is increasing 50% a year, then you need to have everybody else increasing by 50% a year or the total of everybody else in the market increasing by 50% a year, not just Tesla. There's a huge amount of demand coming for v BEV cars. And it's going to mean that all of these competitors are going to do great. And we should just applaud that. All right. One thing is very clear, and this is not a financial advice, although it might sound like it. If the labor numbers come in as light on fri Friday as they did today, yields are coming down probably oil and the dollar with it, and maybe a lot, markets will, of course, respond by being strongly up, just as they are showing today. And that's not, there's no investment advice in there at all. And I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, the Model Y is the top selling vehicle of any kind in Australia, adding this entire continent to the record books across the world. Also announced that New Zealand is added as another country on that list of the top selling vehicle of all kinds is the Model Y. Then there's Sweden. September saw plug-in EVs take 63.4% share in Sweden, up from 55% uh, year on year. Most of the plug-in growth is coming from full electrics, which alone took 44% share. Overall auto volume was 28,000 units up from uh, up some 28% year on year and roughly in line with pre-2020 season norms. The Tesla Model Y was Sweden's best-selling vehicle of any kind in September and year to date by a large margin. Okay, let's take a look at where the markets are right now. It should be fun. Tesla up six points, six dollars. All right, the Dow is just barely up. That's kind of weird. It's up like, let's not even call it up. Let's just say the, the Dow is even. The NASDAQ is up a half a percent. S&P is up 0.25, a quarter of a percent. And Tesla continues up two and a half percent. The overall uh, uh, Magnificent Seven, only Meta is even. Everybody else is up nicely. 
and the Kathy Woods are, oh, actually interesting with the bonds down. You would think that Kathy Woods would all be up, but no, it is a mixed bag in the Kathy Woods, although very close to break even, hardly anything up strongly. Okay, and uh, just for fun, looking back at Tesla, yeah, still up six. Okay, now let's go look at those other numbers, make sure the bonds are still um, uh, down this morning. Maybe they've actually turned around. Uh, just a second, let's go ahead. All right, we're looking at crypto, um, Bitcoins up 177. They're happy with the news this morning. Uh, the pound is gaining as far. So again, the dollar is probably going to come down a little bit with this news, especially if if the uh, bond yields are still down. Uh, gold down again. Uh, that's uh, unusual. Now down to 1838. This is crazy. Um, oil down uh, $2.66. This is better than it was earlier at 86.56. This is really, really good. We'll see what it is. We'll see if this holds. And Brent continues to be less than $2 higher than, uh, than uh, Texas Intermediate, which means that Brent now is down even more. It was almost to 100, and it's now only 88. Uh, we've got the bond market is down, but still over 4.7, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's take a look at the more uh, the closer ones. Uh, the two-month is down slightly. Um, the three-month is down slightly. And the two-year is down five uh, uh, 0.052, um, you got, which is about what the 10-year is down. So those two are kind of in lockstep. But overall, the yield inversion has been inverting. The yields have been getting closer. And that is good news long-term, is considered to be a possible um, uh, recession uh, consideration as those un, uh, uninvert. Um, I don't totally buy into that theory, but anyway, that's just me. As I mentioned, um, Cybertruck sales are doing extremely well. This Cybertruck, at least, this one is actually available. You can get it, 25 bucks a piece. You just send that money to paypal.me forward slash Randy Kirk information in the, uh, the, in the description below. Um, if you would like to get it for free, you can join Patreon at the $10 level. Lots of folks signing up for Patreon. Thank you very much. I was going to put out another list of names this morning, and I forgot. Got to do that. I'll try to do that this afternoon in my show later this afternoon. So you can get this for free. Join at the $10 level. Uh, as you know, I'm starting to put two to three, even as many as five, uh, news breaking news stories up on Patreon every day. Uh, have been doing that now since Sunday. Uh, people seem to like it. We'll see. Maybe you, maybe that's interesting to you. Maybe it's not. But if it is for five dollars a month, maybe it's worth it to you. All right. Um, let's see. What have I, else have I got to say? Oh, uh, just one more thing about this. If you're out of the country, please add uh, twenty dollars uh, for freight. No matter how many you buy, just one twenty dollars will cover the freight edition, regardless of the number you buy at twenty five dollars each. Okay, I think I need to get this up or you guys will be wondering, where's Randy? <laughs> it's been great talking to you.